is going to be the final video of my three-part video series on the Eaton Microlink FR160. If you haven't already watched parts one and two, make sure you go back and watch those before continuing on with this one. Let's go over the pros and cons of this little radio. We'll start off first with the pros. So the number one pro for this is you know, by having this and having the hand crank method, you never have to worry about replacing the batteries on it. The only thing you have to really worry about is the arm braking. So as long as that doesn't break, you're always going to have uh, a radio and a flashlight available in an emergency situation. Uh, the, the next uh, pro on this, I really like the flashlight feature of it. I like that it did a, a gradual fade when the light's on. So if it's fully cranked, this is slowly going to dim. Uh, you'd always have a light source if you were, you know, in a tent or in a, a shelter or if you're just in your house with the power off. And you don't have to worry about leaving it on and having the battery die and then not having any kind of light source. So that was really cool. Uh, the headphone jack I really liked as well. It's in stereo. And, uh, like, for example, the Sony radio is only in mono, and some, a lot of people don't like that. So if you want to listen to some FM radio stations, uh, that's a nice feature to have, having the stereo. You don't have to buy any kind of adapter. Uh, I found that the weather band was extremely handy, especially uh, we were in a snowstorm here in the Seattle area, and the weather bands came in extremely uh, useful throughout the day. I was able to go through different uh, stations and find out the latest and greatest news on uh, the snowstorm that we had. I thought that the crank seemed fairly durable. I was uh, initially I was a little concerned that it was going to break, but you know I had a lot of people try it out and kind of go yank at it as hard, you know, not as hard as they could, but you know within reason. And I thought that it performed great on that. Uh, for the, I, I really enjoy having an analog tuner on this. I don't having a digital one. I get a little bit scared that if the digital the the screen were to break, I would have no idea how to where the st stations would go. I'm not as concerned about with with this. I could still have some kind of feel where where in the the stations I am. So once I get to all the way to the far left, it stops there, and I could say, all right, I'm we're at around 88.5 or so, and, and gradually going up. Uh, it's very durable. Uh, it has a nice feel to it. It doesn't feel like it's going to break at all. Uh, it, it, uh, versus, you know, the Sony, this kind of has a cheap, uh, plasticky feel to it. So this is definitely, seems like it could take a beating if it needed to. It looks pretty cool, too. So you actually get a lot of people's attention. When I was uh, going through my test on this, people would go, oh, what is that? And, and so I could talk, talk to them about it, and it kind of, you know, gets people's interest. So on um, the cool factor, it is pretty cool looking. I like that it had a texturized grip on the bottom here, these two little strips here, so it doesn't really slide when it's on the table, uh, versus, uh, you know, there's no grip here. So this kind of thing could be sliding around uh, again. And then I also like that it was able to do a tail stand for when you have it in LED. Although it's kind of a sloppy tail stand. It's not very, very clean. But at least you could do that if you wanted to light up a room. All right, now for the cons. The number one con that I found during my testing is cranking kind of sucks, <laughs> to put it lightly. The last thing I'd want to be doing in an emergency situation, especially if I'm outside and weak and trying to conserve on calories, is be doing this for two minutes straight trying to get a little radio signal. I'd much rather have a battery operated radio and conserve that energy. You know, it's one thing doing it in the comfort of your living room, but outside in a real emergency, I, I wouldn't really want to be cranking, I don't think. Also, I wish it had the battery pack was two AA rechargeable batteries versus this little battery pack, just to give you another option in case you didn't want to crank. Uh, another con that I found, I, I think that the antenna is kind of short for this radio, especially when you compare it to the Sony. The Sony is almost seven inches longer uh, than the Eaton. And I found that it kind of affects the signal too. I think you get a better uh, signal using this little Sony, which is $10, versus the Eaton, which is $30 to $35. So I kind of wish it had a little bit longer of an antenna. Another con that I found is that the battery LED indicator here, I think it's kind of useless. It only ch lights up when you're charging this thing. So, and do you really need to have an LED letting you know, oh, it's charging right now? I would rather have it be an indicator when it, uh, but also have the capability of letting you know when you're starting to run out of juice, uh, which brings me to the next con. Uh, that this thing, ha when you're listening to the radio, you'll be listening like this, and when it runs out of juice, it's just dead. It just, just shuts off and gives you no kind of warning that it's happening. I'd rather have this thing give maybe a beep or even a, have this thing you know, emit a red color to let me know that I needed to crank. By the way, you could crank this thing as you're listening to the radio. So I kind of wish they did a little redesign on that LED to also be able to notify you when you were losing battery. So let's uh, go on to the next con. So yeah, the, the radio just suddenly turns off 
when he, when he finally leaves your juice. Uh, the major con for this, again, is uh, this little USB charger for cell phones. It just doesn't work. Uh, I've tried it on different phones, uh, different things trying to, and it just, uh, it's kind of pointless. Maybe it worked in 1998. I'd rather have something else in here than this USB charger. Let's see if I can open it. There you go. So I'd rather have a, an auxiliary input in here where I could maybe connect an MP3 player up and use the speaker than have a little USB port that doesn't work for me. So that was a major con. Uh, I also found that the volume seems to auto-adjust as I'm listening to stations, depending on the quality of the signal. So if the signal starts getting bad, it, it starts getting real low in volume, and I find that I'm having to constantly mess with the volume controls of this radio. And I didn't really like that. I'd actually prefer to it to be extremely loud on a poor signal than to uh, try to adjust for me. I don't know if that's a design feature or just what I was seeing. Uh, another con that I found is uh, that it doesn't really hold its signal too well. A lot of the times I find after 10 to 15 minutes of listening, I'm having to readjust because it slowly starts to lose its signal versus other radios that I have that, that keep its signal a little bit better. Also, when you're driving, if you're driving in a car, this thing is, does not work that well. You'll, there's no, it's not like listening to a car radio or anything. You'll totally lose the signal and you're constantly having to adjust. Versus other radios, I've been able to, you know, go on trains and stuff and be able to listen to a radio station as I'm driving, as I'm going on the train. Uh, but with the car, if I'm driving in the car with this thing, it just does not uh, hold its signal well. It's, it, you're kind of screwed until you stop. So I, I found that as a con. Uh, also, uh, trying to listen to this in any kind of humidity, I, it, I actually, it, it says that it's not supposed to work in humidity, and it really doesn't, because if you try to listen to the radio in the shower, uh, you're going to lose your signal. It's, it's very quickly going to start sounding, you know, it's just going to be on a static after, after a little bit in the shower. So, and that's not a, it says that it's not supposed to work, and it really doesn't. <laughs> Let's see, uh, another thing, let's see, the price, the price of this, it's, I think it's, it's a little pricey. I wish it was about 20 bucks. I think that'd be pretty fair for this uh, when you compare it to the Sony or even this little uh, Kato radio. These are more around 10 to 12 bucks, and this is 30 to $35. And I actually think the radios perform a little bit better on these. Uh, another con that I want to list, this one's, that's not really a con on the product. It's just with the Eaton American Red Cross. As you can see, it has a little advertisement here. And uh, Eaton will contribute 50 cents of the sales price to support the American Red Cross. And this thing, again, is 30 to $35. So I, I really wish that they would contribute more like $1 to $2 for, for that kind of price range. Uh, 50 cents, it seems a little cheap to me to be contributing to the American Red Cross. It doesn't really talk about it on the websites, but you'll see that here on the back of the box of this device. So, yeah, I kind of wish that they would donate a little bit more, especially for uh, this expensive of a radio. That's going to do it for this product review of the Eaton Microlink FR160. Overall, I think it's a good radio. I don't think it's a great radio. I think it's best served to have in your emergency stash. For example, if you want to have a little shoebox at home that's filled with candles and matches and flashlight and batteries and a radio, this might be a good thing to have in there. Also, I think it'd be good if you're trying to do a, if you want to have it in your bug out bag and you're planning on doing an extended bug out. So if you're planning on bugging out for months on end, Mad Max style, and going out to the woods and you don't want to have to worry about batteries, uh, this would be a good method you know, good approach for you. But if you're going to do a 72 hour bug out or maybe up to seven to 10 days, I think maybe going with a battery operated radio would be a better option. Uh, just less to worry about. And I think it actually functions a little bit better than this. This had a little bit more cons than pros for me. I was, I was really hoping that this would be an excellent option, but the, the charging, the USB charging, and then just the overall quality of the radio, I, I was uh, not as happy with this as I have, am with other radios. So that's going to do it for this product review. Please feel free to leave any kind of comments below. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask those as well. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video of the Eaton Microlink FR160. Talk to you guys later. Thank you.